If, if Jesus was God, yeah. why did Jesus need to walk to the tree and find out it's got no fruit? Okay, sir, are you why? Listen now? In sir. our Quran, it sir. tells us Allah. Yo, God are you going to listen? You're going to ask him. Uh, he is saying he's asking the question, asking the question. He wasn't okay. God. He wasn't God. When Zabu was testing Jesus, he asked him, like, jump off of this and, like, you can fly. You're God. You can do anything. But the thing is, is, um, God and, like, Jesus, he is human. Like, he... Uh, human. Yes. He is God is human? Yes. Yes, because... Answer my question. Let is God I human? No! Let her finish. Let her finish. God makes God put on flesh. So, 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 so. The eternal spirit robed in flesh okay. and blood. Okay. 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 The Bible is clear okay. on this. Okay. My God is so loved. <laughs> my God came from okay. ESA. Your God okay. can't do it. Okay. Okay. Your God is limited. Okay. Your God is limited. My God has no boundary. Allah. Your God has no limit. Jesus crucified the humanity, yes, okay. the people who killed Jesus. Jesus said, No, my question. Sorry, I, I think you wanted to ask a question. You didn't get an answer to the question. What is, was it some specific question? I'm a Muslim, by the way. You can ask me if you want. Okay. No, no, no. I just, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming and for like, doing this. Because it is good to like, make people think, you know, because yeah. I'm not against any religion. I think they're all great. I just don't appreciate how he's bashing on the Christian because he's, he's really emphasizing on the amount of books and that's not what matters. It's the content, not the content. You know what I mean? So, I don't really appreciate how he's doing that, how he's not listening. I think what he's doing is a great cause. And I just wanted to shake his hand and thank him for doing this. I mean, it's not, not about, obviously, I mean, I don't know if you, is this your first time in Speakers, speakers Corner? We're from, we're from America, so yeah. Yeah, I realize that. It's your first time. <laughs> uh, because there are many people who come here, there are Muslims who come here, and there are Christians who come here. There's a lot of bashing about religions here. So it's not, it's not only uh, one person doing it. I mean, because, I think because of the way, because of the weather, that's why you see only one person. Normally it's like quite crowded here. No, no, no. Yeah. But what do you, what do you, what do you think of what he said with regards to Jesus being a man and not God? Well, what is your view with regards to that? So we see it as um, in order for like God to show us uh, like the suffering and whatnot that he go through, he went through the stages of the cross. Like he knew when he was a teenager that that's what he was going to be doing. Right. He knew that that's what um, his, his like ultimate goal was to do is to show us like the good like way to live and like all the suffering what he's willing to do for us as God in heaven he can't do that like because there are people that only will believe by sorry saying, God in heaven can't do uh, so you're saying God in heaven doesn't know the suffering on the earth no, no he knows the suffering we don't like we don't understand the suffering he's willing to go through for us no but why is that necessary why is it necessary for God to go through suffering because in order to understand us sure, he knows sure. us right for sure but he's trying to reach out to those that were straying so far from like him so that's what he was doing is he was like reaching out to those of us that like you know um and, and to save like our students but isn't that isn't that what exactly what the prophets did for example moses david abraham all those prophets who came before didn't they do that didn't they try to reach out to the poor to the one who were oppressed to the one who were uh, in need of of salvation yes, they so did. if and if so did our saints because as catholic we believe yeah. in saints oh well. you're a catholic okay yes i'm a catholic right so i mean obviously nothing negative <laughs> Because no, no, no. I know majority of the people, majority of the Christians are Catholic, so I do recognize that as a mainstream Christianity. But what I'm saying is that what I don't understand is why does God need to suffer in order for your humanity to be saved? That's what I don't understand. Because you see the the Abrahamic faith, there's like three faiths here: yeah? Christianity, Judaism, Islam. Judaism and Islam do not believe that God becomes a man, or he suffers, mm -hmm. or or anything basically 
any any other weakness that human human beings have. For example, there's a clear verse in the Bible which says that God is immortal. Now, if God is immortal, and then you say Jesus is God, there's some sort of a contradiction here because one died and uh, the other didn't. Right, but, so we believe in like life everlasting, of course. So like when you can go to heaven and then you live there forever. So what he did is he came down to earth. Granted, I'm not a professional, obviously, in this. I'm just a Catholic person that's trying to... No, no that's fine. I mean, I want to know the reasoning behind Right. Your, right. your faith. So, and to, to save our sin, but the thing is, is um, yeah. he's a very, he's a very loving God, and I don't know that much about like your guys' gods. I'm gonna be honest, I don't. I wish I did, and yeah. um, I think like it's. No, he's loving. Obviously, God is loving, but God is also just. Oh, he so, is just. And he, but, so just because he's loving doesn't mean that everyone gets to go to heaven. That's why we have. So Catholics believe when he, um, up to the point before Jesus was here, if you did mortal sins, you went straight to hell. There was no. Um, really. There was yeah, there's okay. no there's no confession or anything like that. So you don't believe there was before, forgiveness before? Before no, there was forgiveness. Right. Like if you committed like a mortal sin, like something. We oh, yeah, I see. Like murder, like murder or something like that. Right. So if okay. you do something like that, like you're screwed. You're like you weren't gonna yeah. go to heaven. So what happens now? Now, let's say you uh, do a mortal sin, um, right. or even a venial sin. We go to confession as Catholics, and what that is, is it's just like you being forgiven. Where most Christians believe, like, if you, no matter what sin you do, as long as, like, you, like, believe in, like, God, like, you can still go to heaven. Where we, as Catholics, believe, um, you have to go through that humility and, like, through that process of, like, talking to God himself, like, through, like, the church and being, like, okay. The confession, so yeah? Confession. So you're saying if somebody murders, you can just confess for it and you go scot-free? No, 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 no. They How does it work? It's, so, I mean, you have to change as a person, too. It's not just you go to confession and, like, boom, like, you're good to go. You know, before, there was, like, death penalty for somebody who murdered. Mm -hmm. There was death penalty for adultery. Yep. I'm, I'm trying to understand what happens now for a person who has actually murdered someone mm -hmm. and he has been convicted of that murder. Yep. So how would you, as a person from, just say you Ju you are a judge and you, okay. you you do justice based on what the what the Bible says. Yes. So from the New Testament perspective, yep. how would a person or how would the victim of that murderer get justice if all he has to do is just confess for it? It's not all he has to do though. So you confessing is just a step. It's just a step saying like, hey, yes, I'm heartfully sorry. Obviously, I'm, I'm sorry enough yeah. that like, He's I'm repenting, coming basically, here. Yeah. Yes, I'm repenting and I'm yeah. doing it in a humility way you know right so there's that but you actually have to change as a person like the thing no is, what about the justice part the, the justice, justice for the victim honestly the suffering of trying to become a better person if you murdered someone there's obviously something going on wrong with you or if, like you repetitively do well you're a criminal aren't you you got to you, you, to, you get you got there got to be some justice served <laughs> yes because the and justice of the the, the law of the land will obviously either give him a life sentence yeah. or a death sentence depending on which uh, law you follow or which right, country because, so because, i'm i'm yeah. saying if you were Christian yep. and you abided only by the New Testament yep. and you follow the law within the, so I, I want to know what is the law in the New Testament for a person who is a convicted criminal like a murderer or a rapist like how they're gonna get to heaven yeah sorry go on sorry say again no, no, it's a hypothetical question yeah well, but but what I'm saying is that regardless of what uh, your your spiritual um, uh, I mean uh, 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 the degree of spirituality in you I'm saying with let's say you base your judgment only on the New Testament yep. how would what is the law in the New Testament that this person is now under in terms of serving justice to the victim of that particular murder that's what I want to know because you see in Islam it's very clear the person who commits a murder he gets punished mm -hmm. and he doesn't just confess obviously he has to be repentant yep. but then he also has to go through the punishment yep. and Islam they give they give three choices they give the choice of a uh, basically the death penalty in case of a murder or B the blood money where the victim's family is approached They're given these three choices by the judge once he's been convicted So one of the choices is like I said the death penalty or the blood money. You know what the third choice is? Forgiveness complete forgiveness no money no penalty and you know who decides that not the judge not the jury But the victim's family because they understand the pain the other ones who will be suffering the most so this ruling is not Obviously, the judge decides whether he's convicted or not. He goes through that process of a normal, uh, uh, the, the law of the land. Yeah. So, this is what I'm trying to understand. From the Christian perspective, oh, from so the New Testament... Like, actual, like, law or what? No, no, yeah. I'm not saying what you do. I'm just asking, right. Right. what does the New Testament teach to serve justice in such a scenario? 
Because what I understand so far from most Christians I spoke to, they say, oh, Jesus died for your sin and that's it. No, no, no. So, see, we don't believe that. I'm not saying you guys believe that. I'm no, just, no, saying, no, just saying what, right, from right, my experience. Right. And yeah. so how we see it is it, it's not um, like, yes, you have to do like the confession. If you're a Christian, you know, like being a Christian does not give you a headway into heaven. It's just like what you believe in if you practice it. So let's say I, I murdered someone. I'm not planning on it, but yeah. let's say I did. Um, me going to confession would be the step like me telling God okay, like so yeah, that's step which one. You understand. Yeah. And then the next step, but the thing is, is like the priests can't like go out and tell everyone that. Like they are told that like, you cannot share anyone's sin. It's between you and God, and you have the choice of being behind a scrim. So it's confident, like you know. So like you, you don't have. They don't have to know who you are. And so when you do that, that's like you talking to God, and then you just going through like the church and like that blessing is how we see it. Now, now it's up to you. You can redo that. Like if I decide to murder someone else again. Like, what, why did I go to confession? Obviously, I wasn't perfectly sorry for it. It's your punishment is you having to, like, fight to become a better person because you can't say that you're a Christian or you're a Catholic if you don't practice, if you don't try making yourself better. So if you're committing this, like, mortal sin over and over again, like, your punishment is that hardship of trying to, like, become a better person. And in that process, like, whether it's, just daily things that you do different or just like how you completely change your life in order to like be better but judgment wise yes we believe he is a very just god not anyone's just going to make it into heaven if you do something extremely wrong he's just so You're what going to make it so where is the where is the um the justice served because okay the step one is confession in the church yeah okay but we don't whatever confidentiality no, that's fine is, like, but i'm saying what is what happens then I'm not talking about repeat offenders. I'm talking about a one-time offender, and even repeat offenders, yes, obviously, so like, because if one-time offender, if if he murders one time, yes. there's no guarantee one murder again. But you see, if you let him go the first time, what is the guarantee that he won't murder again? It's your free choice. It is. The whole point is like. So where is the law? Where does the law come in here? Well, see, the, that's just it. Like. That's it. You don't. No, 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 you don't no, punish no, him. No, no, that's no, no, it. No. What I'm saying is like. Okay. The, it, it's, it's on you. It's not this world that's gonna. Make Sorry, on whom? On the it, on the it, person it's who. On you. It's, it's all on you on how you're gonna change. Like, yes, I could go out there. I could commit a murder. I could be really sorry for what I did, but I don't change as a person. Like, even if I just did that one murder, like obviously something was going wrong. Maybe I was just in the wrong place, at the wrong time, and it just like is something that happened. But the thing is, is how we see it is it's it's you. Like how you. Everyone's. Process you're you're looking from the point of view of the actual person who committed the murder. Yes. Why didn't you? Look at from the point of view of the victim and his family yes, the victim or her and family. family. Yes. And how will they? How, for example, let's say somebody murdered somebody in your family. Yeah. Do you not want to see justice served, or do you just say forgive every time? And these people who who, who you forgive all the time, yes. then what happens is these people they get complacent no, and they go on committing have... repeat offending. Uh, they become repeat offenders. And I can see where you're coming from, but yes. as how we see it is like we can be like. So if someone like murders someone in my family, yeah. like I'm going to forgive them. I'm not gonna forget. Like obviously I'm gonna go through like the legal process like of this world to like make sure that it's different. But like spiritually wise, like, that's what we're talking about spiritually okay. wise. And spiritually wise, my job is to forgive them. If I have a grudge against them or if I am um, just feeling angry or even if I hate them, that's a moral sin. Like that's now me that's committing a sin to them. Do you think that's uh, that, that approach is practical? Yes. So imagine some a person like Hitler comes and uh, yeah. attacks your country. Yeah. What do you do? Just sit by and say uh, you're forgiven. No, no. Then what I, do you do? I, I can make. You're gonna fight him back? Yeah, but like the thing is, like, I can and is that something that the New Testament class. teaches? That's what I'm trying to get. Right. I'm not trying to ask you what's your personal opinion. You right. see, no, no, because no, we I'm can be. Uh, I'm telling you what my religion <laughs> says, and like, so if there's a war, Catholics are not against yeah. war. Like, let's say, like a Hitler thing happened all over again. We're gonna be like, yes, like go to war to stop this bad thing that's happening. Like, okay. stop it. But we need to forgive them. We need to forgive them, but it doesn't mean like us forgiving. So what does what does forgiveness act? mean in this in this context? Because to be honest, when yes. there is a war, when somebody is coming to attack your country, yes, yes? yes. I mean, the, no, you, I, when you I see when you like, see the little children being bombed and killed in front of you, yes. you don't want to go around just saying forgive you, forgive you, forgive. No, no, no. You see, it's not practical. No, like, you have to be like on your defense, obviously, but like 
So a lot of Christians are being like persecuted in other countries right now. Yeah. And as our job, like I don't hate that religion that's doing it because I know it's not the religion that's practicing it. It's just like radicals. That's all it is. Yeah. It's just and you got radicals on both sides. Exactly. You have, yes. You have For example, you, you have must radicals. have heard of the ISIS. Yes. You, you know who are the main victims? The Muslims. Exactly. Like yes. They're attacking so the Muslims are the majority of the victims are the Muslims. Exactly. But you see, we are not talking about fringe groups. That's the reason I went to the Bible. I want to know from the Bible's perspective, from the New Testament's perspective, I do not see a clear law stated as to what happens to a murderer. Because I remember this passage about this um, uh, this woman who had committed adultery or something and the Jews were going to stone her and Jesus says something like, uh, the one who, 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 who did not commit a sin shall cause the first stone. So this is completely opposite oh, to that, what was no, happening no, in the no, Old Testament. So that, that's, that, that's not showing you the whole story. That's just a phrase. Right. If you kept reading, what it goes on basically saying, is saying, is that Jesus was like, whoever has not committed a sin cast the first stone. Meaning like, you guys are all sinners. They all dropped their stones and they walked away. They didn't stone her because they have all committed a sin. Jesus is saying like, we have all sinned. And right. we have. And so like, it is for us not to judge. We are not supposed to judge her because of her sin, because you have sinned too. A sin is a sin. Yes, there are some that are worse than others, but in God's eye, every sin is hurting him. So, me murdering someone, yeah, it's obviously. But didn't didn't God? Uh, sorry to cut you off, but didn't God make that law to stone to death anyway? That was an old one. When Jesus, that's what I was trying to tell. Him. Wasn't Jesus God in the Old Testament? Yes, but when so he Jesus, made the law. When Jesus came, but then later like, on, times the thing is, is like times change. Religion stays the same, but like. So yes, back then, stoning someone for a sin like that was big. But then when Jesus came, that's when like confession was available. He's the one that started like Catholicism because before then, as I said, like uh, the Jews believed like if you committed a major sin, like you were going to hell. Now you did Jesus case. recognize the Old Testament laws? Did he recognize it? Yes, he recognized So when he said that, obviously during that, uh, he recognized uh, the process of where they stoned the adulteress, I mean, he said that whoever has sinned mm -hmm. shall cause the first stone. If, he, if the law was, I think, he, said he, he did not say the law is no more now. You cannot stone anymore. You see what I mean? No. He's still acknowledging that the law is existing, but there is a, there's a condition now. And the condition is, you got to be sinless somehow, I don't know. Uh, that's what it implies over there. But the question arises, Jesus was sinless. Why did he not abide by the law of God? But he did. He didn't. He didn't stone her. He said, you are free to go. No, he at said, the end. whoever who has not sinned. Yeah. The not sin. Which includes him. He's without sin. But he, Do you not agree that he's without sin? Oh, he is without sin. So if he's without he sin... Chose, but he chose not to stone her. Because the stoning was not... Like, that was something that the Jews were doing. But he was no, right. it was a God's law. That's why they were doing it. It wasn't because, just because the because Jews felt like stoning no, 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 people no, 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 no. who are don't trust. But that's just... That's what I'm saying. It's like, the Jews are... Like, the Jews were supposed to, like, become, like, Catholic. Like, a lot of them did. All of the Catholics... Like, Catholics came Catholic. way back. I mean, way afterwards. Not Okay, anyway, no, that's no, a different... No, no. That's a different story. No, but, uh, like, when uh, Catholic system started was when Jesus came and he did the, the Last Supper. And the Last Supper, that's, that was the beginning mass. That was okay. the first mass. And from then, that's when the saint, or like that's when Peter like started putting into practice and that's when he started going to the first. You know, there's actually a passage where Jesus, uh, God, okay, where, where Jesus, um, it's in Matthew, Matthew 15, I believe, the very beginning, where Jesus rebukes these Jew, Jewish people who are mocking his disciples. They say that, look at your disciples, I'm paraphrasing, who do not even wash their hands before eating or something like that. And Jesus tells them that, why do you, for the sake of your tradition, he's telling the Jewish, uh, I think it was the Pharisees who was speaking to, why do you, for the sake of your tradition, do not abide by the law of God? And the law of God was, anyone who curses their mother or father shall be put to death. Now you see this is an Old Testament law and Jesus here is trying to basically um, rebuke them for stopping or not practicing that particular law of God. Okay. So, okay. so the law of God or the Old Testament law was, was something that Jesus is now telling them that why do you not perform according to what God has told you to do. Anyone who curses a mother or father shall be put to death. This is Jesus' word in Matthew 15. Now, I'm asking, I mean, if the Old Testament laws were no more applicable, why is Jesus now rebuking them for not following it? Because this is like 1400 years after Moses. Yes, yes. 13, 1400 years, yeah. In the Old Testament, from what I understand and what I've been told and taught. Oh, sorry, this is in Matthew.
too. This is in the New Testament, by the way. Yes, yes, I'm saying, but in the Old Testament, yeah. um, it was a lot stricter. It was a lot stricter, and there was, like, a reason behind that. It was just to get, like, people on the straight and narrow, and, like, this is, like, how it is. But then people started straying and going all over the place, and what really needed to happen in the New Testament when Jesus came is there just needed to be, like, more... Sorry, I can barely hear you. Is it okay? Move a bit here? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're about. just moving a bit here because I can barely hear what... I don't want to... Yeah, I have to go. So I'll that's fine. That's fine. Have, so thank you for talking. This has been yeah, actually no really problem. fun. Yeah, no um, problem. a good experience, actually. So yeah, I hope your questions get got answered. Yes. But I know sometimes it's difficult when you got a big.